what's going on you guys welcome back to the channel Anderson and welcome to project CLK 55k update you guys have probably been wondering what the heck is going on with the CLK 55 especially since we started a whole nother project while this is still being finished but uh, trust it is still being worked on it's still on the way it's just taking some time it's a lot of things to sort through I just got done cleaning up all of the leftover silicone on the surge tank gasket meeting surface so what I'm gonna do right now is pop in our new factory injectors. Got these over from FCP Euro. Thank you to Eli and FCP Euro for hooking it up on these. They really gave me a good deal. So appreciate that. It's just, again, it was a peace of mind thing, guys. These eBay injectors, yes, they flowed. Seemed like they worked, but the spray pattern wasn't great, especially with comparing it even to an old, old set of OEM ones. And I just didn't want to skip on something like that for a build of this caliber. It's just not worth it. So showing out the money and uh, got these new factory injectors, 550ccs. Got the rail up here. I'm going to go ahead and de-electric grease them up, get them in the rail, pop the rail back on. And then we'll move on and can probably get the surge tanks and everything sorted in the engine bay. I do need to make one AN line and uh, talk to you guys about a few options I have for the fuel delivery system. All right, guys, I got the rail all prepped, um, but I want to show you guys this real quick. Uh, just like on the uh, SLS, I believe, or whatever engine or whatever chassis, high performance chassis uses the M113K, they have the front fuel rail looped underneath the supercharger. That's how they set up this car. Uh, what I had done is put on the uh, heat reflective tape onto this AN line. The AN line was still in good shape, so I just kept it as is, but I wanna show you guys, I used the wire to snake it through because if I tried to do this without that, it would have been impossible. So um, got it through now. I uh, have the gaskets surface all clean. So on both sides, so now I'm ready to put the rail in and uh, yeah, be able to plug everything up. You guys know, from a while back, we got our surge tanks powder coated, all unison. Oh, plastic clip stuck to it. <laughs> all right, get that off of there, but anyways. All unison in a uh, kind of gunmetal gray. And you also know, if you've been following along, that I laser printed my own uh, rubber cork gaskets and that is for holding a little bit more boost pressure and just overall getting a better seal I mean, I don't plan on going crazy crazy with the power numbers on this setup, but it is gonna make more than stock with the 180 millimeter uh, wise tech crank pulley and a few other little mods so uh, That is the plan. I have one sitting on here right now what you need to do with these, uh, recommended, um, is to use a little bit of spray adhesive. So I'm just gonna use some trim adhesive, spray a little bit down um, on the side that's gonna mate to the bottom surface. You don't need to do it on both sides because that's gonna make it a nightmare trying to put it on, but just on the bottom ceiling surface so that you can stick it on here and uh, allow it to sit in place while you're trying to place your uh, surge tanks. So. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna set you guys up on the GoPro on the hood and uh, just let you watch along as I work. And uh, once we get that done, the last thing I think to do in the engine bay is that last AN line that goes to the rail. So I'm gonna do that after all of this and throttle body obviously too. So let's do this. guys we got one side of the search tank on sorry the GoPro was being glitchy as normal but uh capture most of what we were doing torque spec you just really got to be gentle with it especially with the cork gaskets um, 
just keep going slow small increments and eventually you'll get there so we're clamped down at an even 10 foot pounds for all of them right now uh, we do have a little bit of like blowout on these um, edges but to be honest those are not um, sealing edges those are just attaching it down and applying the proper you know pressure for the inner side so from what I can see all of the seals uh, here are nicely kind of tucked in and don't look like there'll be an issue so that part is done uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clamp down our backwards uh, clamp over there or back clamp and then do this other side and I'll catch you guys once that is all done all right you guys rubber court gasket driver side also very good fit see all the bolt holes line up um, obviously we have you know a little bit of gap here and there but it's nothing that's going to uh, take away from the seal this is all sealing surface so it's gonna be fine um, but yeah happy with it so time to get the second search tank on and we'll kind of look like an M113K again all right guys losing daylight fast but both of the search tanks are on and torqued just got the rubber cork uh, throttle body gasket on so I'm gonna go ahead and plug that up and really the last thing to button up on the engine side will be making the AN line which I will do in the morning all right well damn you guys this is the most complete this thing has been for months pretty insane all of the work you got to account for that's been done it's kind of insane to think about it alone the wiring was a huge undertaking by itself getting rid of all of the spider nest we did the catch can we put it back to basically the stock pulley setup well the up upgraded pulleys but without the tensioner which is a job because with the 180 millimeter crank can't uh, get to the tensioner without taking that off so that was a learning process learning how to do that did the valve covers did the search tanks powder coated um, did our rubber cork gaskets that was a whole other undertaking took me a whole day and probably 30 trial and errors of test fitting and uh, just trying to get them right see uh, fuel injectors 550 cc fuel injectors the fittings and everything to run the rail uh, the way I want to or, or rather the fittings that I want to for the fuel pressure and etc uh, breather port there's probably more that I'm forgetting Oh, valve cover gaskets we did the felpro blue valve cover gaskets the Viton oh my god you guys there's so much has been done to this thing but I'm so so happy to have it right here buttoned up I don't have to have towels covering all these spots anymore obviously I'll put a towel over the throttle body but besides that it's like sealed and solid and I am so pumped because this means we're getting that much closer to firing this thing up my plan tomorrow morning finish the AN line and I'm gonna hop in to the fuel pump and try to swap in our uh, Walbro 525 and uh, my my idea as for now is basically to run a fuel pressure gauge an electronic fuel pressure gauge to the cabin and just take it for an easy test drive and see what fuel pressure looks like with the stock sending unit and stock filter with the regulator built in i don't know what it will do um and obviously if i see anything that looks scary then we'll just stop and go from there but um that's the plan as for now all right guys well, welcome back to the clk video i've been bouncing back and forth between benzin on a budget episode six work and this thing uh, all day today and this thing is uh starting to look like an m113k again got everything tightened up um air boxes back in it's a bit of a tight squeeze over here as you can see with the uh, fuel pressure gauge just barely squeak by but it'll work um that is the updated Y split, so fits properly now. And uh, we'll leave it like this pretty much. It's buttoned up. I finished up the last AN line in the back. The last uh, two things I need to do, which I'm contemplating just starting it and then moving it into the garage to do because it's a bit sketchy to do it out here, like you guys saw. 
I do need to change a fuel filter. I thought that I had the correct one in there already, but it turns out it's different. So I have the correct one now, but I need to jack the car up obviously to do it. And on the dirt, it's not really the most comfortable. So I'm either gonna get some wheel cribs and uh, do it that way, or um, yeah, honestly, I'm just considering starting it and pulling it into the garage. We'll see, but uh, this feels really good to be done. Um, one thing you guys did not see is I put the breather port um, farther away. I think, after all, I could have kept it where it was, but I just figured I would get it out of the way a little bit so the airbox could fit down a little bit easier and not have to worry about it. I'm missing the clasp that's on the back right corner, but I mean, it stays plenty solid, so it's not a worry at all. Um, and yeah, besides that, this thing needs a bath really bad. Could really benefit from some, from some headlight polishing. <laughs> and I uh, just overall need to go through it, make sure all the tires are aired up and all that stuff when they get it back roadworthy. But um, yeah, this feels good. We're making progress. All right, guys, we are on the phone with Josh. Very important part of this build and uh, important part of everything we're doing over here. Mercedes Swap Shop, so big shout out to him. You can say what's up, Josh. What's up, guys? <laughs> yeah, we're on the phone. We were actually talking about something completely different, but now we're curious about the CLK 55. You guys have seen from this progress video, engines all back together. I've been contemplating what to do with the uh, fuel assembly, fuel pump setup, and all that stuff, but Josh is curious what it will do right now if we just fire it up and let it idle, so. That's what we're gonna do. Camera's rolling, yes. Okay, here we go. All right, you guys, well, <laughs> holy crap. Um, that was kind of nonchalant, so thank you, Josh, for being on the phone with me. It made me uh, at ease trying that out, but uh, he recommended I let the car idle for a little bit. Um, if you guys did see that smoke that was coming off, it's most likely just uh, from oil sitting on the headers uh, from when I had the valve covers off. So I'm gonna let it idle for a little while longer. I will keep an eye on that if it looks weird at all. Um, but yeah, fuel pressure is at 55. It's not enough. We want it closer to that mid 60 range um, all throughout idling, wide open throttle, etc., uh, to be comfortable with. So I definitely need to start the game plan is start with the fuel filter out of the M113Ks, which I have. I will test ignition on, see if it's any higher than 55, can try to idle it again, see if it's changed. If it's still not where we want it to be, then that's when I'm gonna get into swapping the pumps. Um, nobody really knows, nobody has the blueprint on what the stock CLK55, C55 pumps produce as far as liters per hour go. There's rumors that they're around 380, which 380 would be enough to run M113K. Um, you want ideally a little closer to, you know, like mid 400s, but it would be able to work. This car has been put together for quite some time. So it has worked, um, but how efficiently, we don't know. And uh, it's better off to just bump it up and 
get it to that mid 60 range. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up with you guys and uh, just keep an eye on everything over here. Um, fuel lines, everything, nothing uh, seems to be leaking. So that is good. Um, nothing over there. Just double check everything. It's always better to double check than try to do so afterwards, but uh, let's see. Yeah, rail over here is good. And all these connections all look good too. So let's go ahead and fire it up again and uh, just keep an eye on everything. Josh said probably let it for 15, 20 minutes. Uh, let it idle for 15, 20 minutes and go from there. So. smoother that time around. Damn, I can't believe this, guys. It's alive. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah, the idle definitely sounded a little funny when I first started up, but, um, you know, it had been sitting for more than two months probably so much much better this time I'm gonna let it get up to temp and I'll check back with you guys what do we do drive huh drive in it. oh no we can't drive it yet it's only running <laughs> oh. yeah but what do we do how do we get it working fix it yeah <laughs> he said you fixed it when we came outside <laughs> All right guys, well, she's idling. I'll keep you guys posted on the next video once we get the proper fuel set up and uh, we're this close to being able to take it for the rips for the first time. So thank you guys, see you on the next one. Peace.